<laughs> Hallelujah. Good to see you. Good to see you all this morning. Welcome. And we also welcome you who are, uh, you know, out there in the internet there. We thank you that you, you know, would spend the time to, to worship with us and to hear a wonderful word. And we just miss you. If you can come, you know, we always welcome. The doors are open. Faith Outreach Community Church, 10301 Old Fort Road in Fort Washington, Maryland. Please come down. We want to, you know, see your smiling faces and, and hear a word from you, too. We miss you guys. And uh, so, hallelujah. Well, we're here. To, the one that's really important, he's already here, amen. And we're here to give him glory and praise today. We thank you so much, great God. We, we want to glorify you in every way, Father. You are a wondrous and loving God. We love you so much, Father. You are a holy God. We thank you for connecting us to you. Thank you, Lord. Here we are to worship Lord God. We've come to worship, oh, we've come to worship. yours, great God. God in the highest. Give it all to you, great God.
praise his name. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, oh great God. We give you honor. We give you praise. You are so worthy, oh great God. Oh, thank you for who you are, for all that you're doing for us, and for the destiny that you have given us in Christ Jesus. We are so, so grateful, great God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for illuminating, Lord God, who you are. We want to give you glory. We want to give you honor. We want to give you praise today. Hallelujah. Is he worthy, church? Is he worthy, church? Hallelujah. Come on, church. Here we go. Give it to him. All of it. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. blessing us, how you are training us and becoming more and more like your son Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. No other name. Come on. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. <laughs> the name of the Lord is a strong tower. <laughs> the righteous run to him. To it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. Glory to His name. What's his name? What's his name? Jesus is the name of the Lord. The one who saves. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Most high. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. We give you all the glory and all the praise because you are truly worthy. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, to meet here in peace. But we realize that in certain parts of the world, Father, they're being persecuted and killed. But Father, you have given us everything we need in this time and we just want to thank you thank you for being here we ask that you will be with those who are not able to be here with us today that would you heal them and bring them back to us soon so now father we just want to turn these services over into your capable hands your capable hands and we thank you once again and we ask this in the mighty name of jesus and the church say amen Praise God, family. Welcome to Church Life. Amen. Amen. We thank you for joining us today in church, in person, and those who are on YouTube and Facebook or even streaming our website. We thank you. We honor you that you chose to worship with us today and to uh, hear this gospel message that will go forth uh, after um, the worship song. Uh, we pray that you will always be uplifted and encouraged by the word. 
Uh, we want to celebrate some birthdays that are coming up this week. We have me, Pastor Celia, August 29th. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Praise God. Um, Matthew Schaefer, uh, back in the sound booth, August 30th. Um, Bob Morale, August 30th. He is one of our um, sh uh, seniors who's a shut-in, but please don't forget about him. Uh, and then we also have Nico Roach, who will be on September the 1st. Amen. Amen. So please remember all your members, okay? And send them a card or call them and wish them a happy birthday. Uh, new prayer requests and updates. Uh, Elaine Spears, Eileen Spears is requesting our prayers for her upcoming hip replacement scheduled for September 20th. 20th so please pray for her uh, in preparation for that. Amen. Amen. We have an update on my brother-in-law, Charles Russell. Praise God. Uh, Charles Russell was released from the hospital last week. Um, it is receiving physical therapy at a real, uh, rehabilitation center. So thank you all for your prayers that were so fervent for him, and he is doing well. Amen. We have continued prayer for Victoria Logan, who is uh, continuing to look for a remote job opportunity. So please continue to lift her up. And uh, we know God uh, will honor her prayers and her requests and uh, keep her on this current job and give her peace in that. Amen. Uh, Robert uh, Whaley, please continue to pray for him after his fall. He is in um, his overhaul health and his well-being. Uh, Carlton Green, who is the father of Pastor Melinda, is currently in, still in uh, home hospice care. Please continue to pray for him and the rest of the family. Jan Logan, uh, please continue to pray for Jan's recovery and physical therapy. She is still experiencing some um, pain in her shoulder after uh, rotary surgery, so please continue to lift her up. Uh, Kimon Williams is, is now receiving therapy for his walking and speech and recovery, so uh, we know his journey, and so uh, this is um, you know, actually going on a year and a couple of months that he's been um, recovering from uh, the sickness that uh, took place last year in July, so please continue to lift him up in prayer. And of course, Bob Morale, uh, please pray for him and any other sick and shut in uh, in prayers for their overall well-being. Amen. Amen. Um, general announcements. Um, our church picnic uh, will be held on September the 10th. Remember to sign up to bring food or drinks, uh, as well as to serve in one of the setup or cleanup teams. The sign-up lists uh, are in the church conference room, which was uh, directly across from this um, double doors. If you are interested in participating, uh, please um, see one of the picnic co-chairs, Ernestine or, or Marcine, if you have questions, okay? Um, Ernestine and Marcine, raise your hand so they know who you are. Amen. Thank you so much again for agreeing to co-chair this event. Um, it, is, it will be successful if everybody chips in, everybody helps, everybody helps clean up. So we just appreciate all of you who will sign up. We know everybody's name will be on that list, right? Right, okay, amen. Um, also, uh, the men's ministry will be uh, held this Saturday, September the 2nd at nine o'clock. Uh, meeting logins will be sent out prior to the meeting. If any one of you are interested, any of the men are interested, please speak with Pastor Logan, um, Tom Logan, who was sitting in the front. Um, also, just a reminder to everyone to continue to meet with your assigned prayer groups to pray for the various communities surrounding faith outreach until Sunday, September the 10th. If you were not at church last Sunday and would like to participate in this corporate prayer, you can see me. Um, and um, I will make sure that you get in a, a prayer group so that you can continue to pray for those who are surrounding us. And I hope all of the prayer groups uh, experienced um, uh, were successful last week uh, when you did that. Um, so we just want to continue in that vein. Amen. Uh, faith Outreach uh, members, uh, use your God-given talents and gifts in one of the following Faith Outreach ministries, Food Bank, Outreach, Praise Team, Children and Youth Ministries. Uh, please see any of the pastors if you are interested in um, desiring to serve in these areas. We, we need uh, everyone to kind of participate and help move us forward, amen, in these uh, ministries. Uh, again, for any of those who wish to participate in the weekly joint prayer every Wednesday night here at the church from 530 to 630, uh, please feel free to participate and you can see me. 
Uh, let us pray. A God-inspired women's ministry group uh, meets every Thursday night for prayer from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. So please see Joanne Hayward if you are interested in participating. And then, of course, our men's ministry, as I said, they meet every Saturday, uh, first Saturday of the month um, at 9 o'clock. Uh, so you can see Tom Logan if you're interested in participating. For those who are out in our platforms, if you want to participate, it's really easy. Just go on our website, click contact us, give us your name and your email address, and we will make sure that you get any login information um, to any of those various groups that meet online. So we just thank you. We are um, asking that if you have any praise reports or updates that you want to announce, please make sure that you send them in to uh, Pastor Logan um, by Friday to tj5050 at verizon.net. Uh, today's sermon is coming. Today is SOP Part 6, um, The Belt of Truth from our Associate Pastor David Russell. So please get ready, get your Bibles out and ready to I'll participate in that. Amen. Thank you, Pastor C. It's so much for serving us this way. Amen. Amen. There's, there's a certain energy and praise when, when Pastor C is up here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let, we want to invite you to rise. We want to sing one more song of praise to him before we hear a wonderful word that prepared by... Uh, uh, Pastor Dave here. God's holiness is something that's amazing. Amen. It, it, we are we were so so separated by rebellious sinfulness and and everything that um, there's no way that we could have worked our way back into that to that uh, holy state. Amen. That that we could be with our Father, but we have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who came and died for us and reconnected us to the Father, and we are clothed in His righteousness amen that we can be we can stand before we can kneel before a heavenly father the fact that we can even call him father is a, is a testimony to what jesus has done for us that we are connected to him not as servants but as children of the most high god amen so let us strive every moment of our lives to be more and more like jesus christ just like him amen hallelujah let's sing to him right now here we go Lord, I want to be holy, set apart for you. Lord, I want to be holy, a vessel tried and true. When I come into your throne room, I receive the strength. sacrifice for you yes living sacrifices lord i want to be holy set apart for you lord i want to be holy a vessel tried and true when i come into your throne the strength that I need to make my life a living sacrifice for you. Yes, in his presence. Lord, I want to be holy, set apart for you.
Apostle Paul said, that is your spiritual act of worship, to be living sacrifices for you in everything you do, everything you do, worshiping him for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Morning, church. Morning. I see we have my man Nolan's in the house, a real worshiper. I heard you singing. <laughs> and that's awesome. When a little child will sing glory to the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. Out of a pure heart, God is good. Good morning, saints. To the people of God. Amen. I'd like to say good morning to those who are watching us through one of our platforms. Bid you greetings in the name of Jesus. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Because our God is so good. And he loves us enough to teach us to speak to us, to be with us, to help us in our journey. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I also wanted to thank Pastor Tom for allowing uh, this opportunity for me to stand before the people of God. Thank you for that, senior pastor. Amen? You know, I don't even know why I bring my word. We got this new technology, praise God. Thank you, Hampton. <laughs> Scriptures pop up here. I'm so used to carrying this around, amen. I ain't got to turn it if I, if I don't need to, amen. Well, saints, we are continuing in our series, SOPs, Spiritual Operating Procedures, okay? We cannot live this life as average people live their lives. We are the children of God. And as his children, he has given us everything we need to walk this walk out. And so it, it calls for a change in our thought processes, amen? amen. It, call, it calls for a change of, I just can't do things now the way I used to just get up and do things. I can't just act like my name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I cannot act like that, that I'm just here without a purpose, without a hope. No, I have a hope. I have a purpose. I have been called. 
I have been chosen. I have been set apart. Amen? Yeah. I am known by he who created all things. I am known. I am loved. And so my mindset has to come in alignment with his truth. We can't journey like regular folks who don't know why they're here, who are just existing, who think it's just about getting up and going to a job, going to Safeway or Giant or Harry Teeter or whatever your spot is, Wegmans or whatever, and coming home as if you haven't received a greater purpose in Christ Jesus, who is Lord. And so the Apostle Paul, in get, this book of Ephesians is powerful. They had him in the worst place that he could be in. But yet the, the Holy Spirit was inspiring him to write some life-changing truths to the people of God. Amen. And so the Apostle Paul, in, in writing this letter to the church at Ephesus, concluded with an uh, important part that's needed for every believer, the armor of God. And so we're going to read our scripture, have our prayer, and try to get through at least point number one. <laughs> Amen. So if we can, if you can open up your Bibles or check out the screen, and we'll turn to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and we'll be reading this morning verses 10 through 14. Amen? And so it is written, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Melissa, can you t take that back to verse 12? Because this is what God is saying to his people. The things that you are facing that are coming against you, that are coming against your mindset, that are coming against you personally, that are coming against your families, that are coming against you on the job or, or at home, that are coming against you. He says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So if you mad at somebody, you already off. If you holding grudges against somebody, or if you see them and you got to, you look at them a certain way because they done made you upset. I was going to say another word, but my mama will correct me later. So we, we, we're going to keep that straight. Amen? And so he reveals that dealing with other people, we got to view that differently. He says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Even though the enemy may be working through somebody, it's not that individual. Amen. It's what's behind that individual. So your struggle, whatever you might be dealing with, 
whatever is trying to get under your skin, whatever's trying to make you uncomfortable, to make you anxious, to make you worried about something, to make you fearful, to make you doubtful, to make you question. Whatever your struggle may be, it's coming from an invisible force that's working against you. You can't see them, but you can feel their effects. You can't see them, but you know something is off. Something is just not right. And it's not just any invisible thing. The Apostle Paul says it's against rulers. against authorities. Against the powers of this dark world. I mean, you... You're not just dealing with something that can't have impact. You're dealing with rulers. They, they ruling something. They don't want to give up on some things that they no longer have authority over, but they still don't want to just give up. They, they, they may have had control at one point, but you've been set free, but they still don't just want to back up. They, they still want to have authority in your marriage. They still want to have authority in your relationship. They still want to have authority over your bodies and over your mindsets. They still want to trick us and play with us. that we have a world in despair and they're trying everything that they can to escape it everything but the right thing and that right thing is the one who came down from heaven to bring freedom to all who believe in him So Paul is saying, your struggle, is real. And it's real against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly realms. Let's go to verse 13. And because of that, And because of that, because you have an enemy that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And they're serious about their game. They like doing what they're doing. They don't want no breaks. They don't want no timeouts. The more they can get in your head, the more they will get in your head. The more they can put their foot on your neck, the more they will put their foot on your neck. They don't know what mercy means. You got tears coming out, that, that excites them. Therefore, because of that, put on 
the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to take, you may be able to stand your ground Can I get a hand if somebody understands God don't want me giving up my ground? God does not want me to run and flee. God does not want me to give up, to throw in the towel. God wants me to put on his armor and take my stand. You may be able to take your stand and after you have done everything to stand, Stand there full, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the love of God. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much that you would send your son, Jesus Christ, to pay the price for all of us to redeem us, to pay the penalty for our sins so that we could be reconciled back to you. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. We seek your faith. We seek your will. We seek your truth that you will speak to us today, that you will help us because we know you love us and we know you want to help us. For your word declares truth. Help us, Lord, to, to be more than hearers, but to be doers. Enable us, Holy Spirit, to walk in the ways of God. So, Lord, we ask that you will fill this place with your presence, that you will speak to all of our hearts to give us what we need to continue in this journey, that you will remove every hindering force, everything that would try to distract every spirit of opposition, Lord, that you will rebuke it and allow us to be on one accord to hear what thus saith the Lord, to be transformed, to be renewed, so that your word can find good ground in our hearts, that you may bring forth fruit in every life, 30, 60, 100 fold, to the glory of God. We need you, Lord. So have your way now. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise forever and ever. And we ask this as your children. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and thank you. And we say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, as we have read this, Jason, you ain't got to go if you don't. He ain't bothering me if you don't want to. I love him. He's encouraging me. The Bible tells us that we can only stand. The only way we can really make it is by putting on the full arm of God. He makes it plain. Because of what we have to deal with, the only way that you can have good days on the evil day is when you put on what God has provided for you to put on and that he wants you to put on. Amen? And it's really, praise God, to help us to deal with everything successfully, no matter what comes against us. God has given us this full armor to be able to be successful and and journey and take our stand and that he will get glory in our lives and we will be victorious through Christ. Amen? Amen? He says, take, put on the full arm of God so that when the day comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And that is God's will. For you, some might say that's God's will for me. Because what's also and what we'll talk about today, we have opportunity, is, is that the enemy knows that when he comes a certain way, what will cause you to be timid, what will cause you to tuck, turn, and run, 
He uses schemes to get you not to stand. He uses schemes to try to get you to distrust God's truth. And so when the trial comes, basically, the trial is saying, you can't count on God to get you out of this. This thing is too big. And we're stressed out and we're anxious because that scheme is whatever we can do to get them to stop trusting the truth about God. That's why some of the things when Pastor Tom was teaching who God is is so important. There's never a time that God does not know what's going on with us. There's never a time that he's not with us. But when we're honest, that thought has been in your head more than one time. Lord, where you at? Those are schemes. And if you're not equipped, you're going to keep listening to that same voice, that same recorder over and over and over, and it's going to have you thinking all kinds of things that ain't true. There's no lost causes when you're in the hand of God. Because in one way or the other, you're going to win. We always win in Christ. He, the, the Bible says he always causes us to triumph in Christ. But we always don't remember that when we're going through, do we? He says, put on. And so we have to actually put on. I asked, Pastor said, you didn't even know I did. Can you just reach in that bag right there and just pull it out and just stand up and show everybody? Everybody know what this is, right? Y'all can see that, right? It's a belt, ain't it? That belt is a belt. But you ain't got to put That's all I just wanted to show them. But that belt ain't holding nothing up if we don't put it on. People want to know why things are falling apart. See, see, the belt of truth is what holds everything together. And if that belt of truth is just hanging up in the closet, it ain't doing no good for what's falling apart on me. Amen. Y'all seen them cartoons and stuff getting to falling? The belt of truth has a purpose, but it's got to be put on. You can't hope it on. You, you, man, I, I, I sure wish I could stand. No, he says put it on. You have to literally be proactive, grab one end of that thing, don't just, because you're, you're, you're paying, and I, we got loops, so we just don't put it on out. You got to go through loops so that it can do what it's meant to do. Amen? A lot of us are getting up and going and ain't putting no truth on in the morning. So when stuff gets to coming down on us, we trying to, we scrambling. Stuff is falling apart because we haven't done what God wants us to do. Amen. You have got to conscientiously put your belt of truth on each and every day because the devil is going to test you each and every day, as to whether you are holding fast to what God has told you. He know he can't do nothing about your salvation, but he can have you to have a tough day. Yeah. 
So we've got to have that belt on, that belt of truth. The Bible says, and you don't have to tear it in, but the first John 4 and 1, it just says, dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. There's all kinds of spirits out there. And if you just, if you just open to everything, he's going to take you on a trip you don't want to be on. We, we kind of have a kind of joke in our family about, you know, Alice in Wonderland and, you know, the, 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 the rabbit went down the hole and it just, the, you don't want to be on these trips that this enemy can put you on. And if, if we don't change things, he has a lot. These forces have power to lead you on a journey you don't want to go and I don't want to go. That's why you have people so stressed out. Because they're not listening to God's truth. You have people committing suicide because they think they're not loved. But we know God loves everybody. And so for everybody who's thinking I'm not loved or I'm not worthy or, or there's no good in me, everybody who's thinking things that are not true and right, need that belt of truth on. So that we can take our stand. Well, listen. Put on 2 Samuel 23, verses 11 and 12. And this I just want to talk about standing. Okay, Hampton, I done test something up in here. Okay, it's good. 2 Samuel. But we talked about, he says, may be able to take your stand. Everybody got that? We're meant to stand. And that word stand is really talking about planting your feet, resisting, becoming unmovable. No, I'm I'm, I'm not, you're not having this. You're not gaining ground. God has given me this plot. You can't have this. No matter how much you roar, no matter how much you weigh something, you can't have this plot because God gave it to me. My marriage is sacred. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my family. Sometimes you take your your stand in prayer. Well, I'm not just going to be receiving this stuff without going to my source to get help. When you're struggling, that's when you really need to go pray. When the enemy is telling you lies upon lies upon lies and you're wondering about your future, you're wondering about this, you need to go to your source. Lord, I need help right now. My legs are a little shaky right now. I need strength right now. Please rise up in me, Lord, so that I can take my stand. 2 Samuel 23. The, if you look at the chapter, it, this is a section about David's mighty men. But this, <laughs> David's mighty men, and David had, David had a couple of people that was just off the chain. My, they just weren't no average fighters. The, the, these dudes was matrix type dudes. These dudes was like superstars. All of them was world champions in their weight class. These dudes was bad. And they had the mindset. 
And so when we did one of them was this guy, I didn't, yeah, we're going to try to teach this thing today, amen? Because I'll be, Lord Jesus, I can't run all these scriptures, amen? But all of them, the man before him, if you get a chance, read verse 9 and 9 and 10 too, because he was a bad boy too. But verse 11 says this, next to him was Shamar, son of Agi the Herorite. And when the Philistines banded together, I want y'all to get, when the Philistines banded together, they came on one accord to come against them. Remember we're talking about the schemes of the enemy? They come together to try to trick you. One might come with, with anxiety on this. One might come with a lie from this. One might come with he ain't feeling well. Another one might come with another summer to come against you. you. You short on this. They band together. Banded together at the place where there was a field of lentils. I kind of like that, 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 you know, it's a cousin to the bean and, and, and the chickpea and it's a field of lentils, Israel's troops. But, but they banded together, and look at Israel's troops. What did they do? They fled from them. So the Philistines band together, and the Israelite troops, who are the people of God, some of them, running. That's important. Because in the previous chapter, the previous one that I, I didn't write it because I didn't want to have too many scriptures. Y'all know I can, I'm trying to not be too long-winded, amen. But, but the enemy, know, if, if, if you ran last time, he said they're going to run again. If you reacted bad last time, okay, now we know what makes them run. Now we know what pisses them off. Lord, that's a, forgive me, mama. Now you know. <laughs> we know they react this way to this. They react this way to that. Oh, all we got to do is do this, and then they're they going to slam the door and go out. And then we ain't talking for the next 24 hours. And they sitting there laughing. They band together. They come against them. Israel truth fled from them. But Shammah, Shama, I mean, he took his stand in the middle of the field. I, I, don't you like that? <laughs> he took his stand in the middle of the field. And he defended it. Do I have any saints that are willing to take their stand for the cause of Christ in the middle of the field? Feel whether it's lentils or whether it's the family or whether it's the church who, who's ready to take their stand because this is the right thing to do. He defended it and struck down the Philistines. And the Lord brought about great victory. All because they say, he said, I ain't running. No, I'm not acting that way. No, I'm not going to. They may be gone. Oh, Jesus. They may have fled, but I'm not fleeing. I'm in the right. Anybody get, I'm in the right. If, if you are in Christ and you're trying to uphold God's way, you're in the right. You're in the right not to just give in and to do what everybody else in the world is doing. You're in the right to uphold righteousness. You're in the right to keep praying, believing that God's going to do something great for you. You're in the right. Why are you believing that? Because my God is awesome. Why are you believing that? Because there's nothing too hard for my God. Why are you believing that? Because he loves us so much. He's merciful. This is what the standing that Paul was talking about. Take your stand. Don't get tired. Don't get fed up. Don't throw in the towel. 
make up your mind that I'm defending this ground. We, this is kingdom ground. This, this is the kingdom of God ground. He done gave it to me. Can't nobody else have it. He defended it. And the Lord, because that's all he, God, God just stand and God's going to bring it. And the Lord brought victory. If we just stand and keep doing what God wants us to do, the Lord will bring victory to that situation. If you can just stand. The enemy doesn't want you to, people don't want to stand on the principles of God. You might have to wait a little bit, but God's going to do what he said he's going to do. The Lord brings the victory. Point one. <laughs> so we have the belt of truth, amen, that we need to put on. And I can't, I can't say it enough, and I don't want to move off on how we had to be cognizant of this. You have to make up your mind that I need to apply God's truth to my situation. Do you hear what I'm saying? We have to conscientiously, and, and, and at times you might be struggling, but you have got to apply God's truth to every situation. Because what you can't just stop is the wave of information that comes into your mind. Stuff that you don't want in your mind, it finds itself in your mind. And so we have got to apply God's truth to every situation and everything. Every morning I need to walk in his truth. Amen? Because that is going to be the only thing that helps me to deal with what this day is going to bring my way is God's truth. Amen? God is going to help me to succeed. Amen? How many believe that? God's going to help me to succeed. He does not fail. And so he says that the belt of truth being the first piece of armor, that we've got to put that on first. And God says in Isaiah 45, 18, he just put that up real quick. He says, so this is what the Lord says. He who created the heavens, he is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He says, I am the Lord and there is no other. I have not spoken in secret from somewhere in a land of darkness. I have not said to, the, to Jacob's descendants, seek me in vain. The Lord speaks the truth. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. He said, he didn't tell you to come to him in vain. No, you, 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 you are blessed when you come to him, when you look to him, when you run to him. That's the safe place. There's nothing else that can satisfy you or fulfill you the way the Lord can. He said, I didn't say to you, seek me. No, because he, what he told his, his, the grandfather is, I am your, your, your exceeding great reward. He says, I, the Lord, speak what is true, the truth. So everything God says is truth and is right. What's the problem? We've been listening to lies. We got a word out there that is so confused. That's so confused. <laughs> Let me stay on point. I'm, 
This world is so confused. Amen. And you know why? Because I want it real quick. Second Thessalonians. Let's hit Second Thessalonians 2, 7 through 14. It, 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 it breaks this out. I want you to just hear this thing. Second Thessalonians verses 7 through 14. And this is why th th this mess that we got going on. It says, for the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And, and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Verse 9. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that, that serve the lie. Verse 10, let's keep going. 10 through 12, listen to this. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth. And so be saved. We got a world out there of people who refuse to believe God's truth. That's why we see stuff spiraling out of control. No matter. <coughs> I, I was. I think I was talking. I was talking to someone. And they was talking about the kids, these kids, these kids. They're so out of control. I said, you know, we messed up when they said you can no longer spank your children. God says a child should be disciplined. But now you got people who think they know right, so now you can't touch them. And if they don't learn to respect their parents, which is the first line of authority, they ain't going to respect nobody else. And so now you can't talk. You you, you got to hope they sit in the corner if you put them in the corner. And they, well, why are they so bad now? Because you didn't control them when they were growing up. I'm glad that my dad whooped me. I'm glad. My dad had a GI belt. He was in the middle. He had a belt that he could work. He could whip that thing. My goodness. And I would sit there and I'd be getting beat. And I said, Daddy, I ain't going to do it no more. He said, I know you ain't going to do it no more. And, and, and he was right. I ain't lying, Emma Teresa. See, Teresa was good. I, I was the youngest, but the reports are really, Teresa did not get in trouble. Teresa did whatever she had. To, Teresa did when she was good. I'm telling you, boy, my brother could get me. He could get me, and then I'm acting up. Because he would pick on me, and then I'm trying to pick. My dad, my, all my mama had to do was say, Russell, get him. Man, you talking about. I remember one time I got a good whooping, and then they made me get in the bathtub. So, you know, the whips are already woo, woo, woo. And then you get in hot water, it's like, oh, man. But you know what? I'm not carjacking anybody. I'm not going in stores to steal nothing that don't belong to me. I'm respecting elders as they walk about because my parents told me to show respect to elders. All because somebody had an understanding, this boy going to need some help. <laughs> y'all laughing, but how many of y'all, how many of y'all glad that y'all had laid, hands laid on you? Goodness. <laughs> You know, it's funny. My son likes to hear about me getting whooped. Cause <laughs> That's why they said yeah, I did what I did. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help us. And so we have a society that does whatever it wants to do. But what society doesn't realize is the invisible forces that are help, you know, manipulate them 
in the setting up programs and things of that, and it's all contrary to what God says. So when you bring up God's word, they, they got a problem with it. But that's truth. And the truth is what's going to help people, not lies. And it would seem that you would recognize that this problem is happening because we are not listening to what God has to say. But we are blessed because God has given us the Holy Spirit. And in John 16 to 13, I just, the Lord says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. She has it on the screen. I love this part. It says, he says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, which tells you that there is so much order. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are all on one accord. And, and so he will speak what he hears. It's, it's, a, it's a word that he'll, he'll speak just to you because it's just to you. He will speak what he hears. And so when the instruction comes, he will speak it, you will hear it, and, it will bl and it's right for you. He will speak what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. Amen? He will tell you what is yet to come. And so we've got to listen to the Holy Spirit. We've got to listen to his voice, to his truth, because he's trying to lead us in the right way, ain't he? To keep us from being messed up. I, was, I had an experience earlier this week. And I had to go to the airport to pick up my sister. And she came in at BWI. And I used to go BWI most of the times down to Baltimore Washington Parkway. We're off, and it's straight ahead to the terminal. You know, bam. Well, on this occasion, I went 303 down, crossed, and, and then came back and to 97 and went that way. And my waves was doing just good until I got off that ramp to head to the airport. And then it started going crazy. Because I had BWI, but it started picking up anything that was BWI. BWI, ex BWI ex extended parking. BWI Resource Center, BWI this, BWI, and it was beep, 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 beep. I am lost. I'm about 1.5 miles or two miles from the airport. My sister plane has landed, and I'm panicking now because I don't know where I am. I could have been in West Virginia. I could not tell. They had no landmarks. It was hilly. I mean, seriously, I was messed up. I'm telling y'all the truth. I was messed up. I was in the, I was driving, and then I would be stopping, beep, beep, and, and cars, mm -mm. you know, I'm, I became that person I always talked about. Like, why in the world is he out here don't know where he's going? What? Why is he even driving? He don't know where he's going or shooting over. I became that person. So God taught me another lesson. Nobody helping me. People shooting by. Uh. Go ahead and laugh, sister, because it is funny now. I'm telling you, I was all discombobulated and messed up and didn't know what to do because I didn't know where I was going. But praise God, I had a helper with me. Now, I'm using it. Well, my son rode with me. And my son must have seen that his dad was panicking. Because he ain't never seen his dad in the middle of a road, don't know which way to go. He never seen his dad unsure behind a wheel. 
And I saw Nathan pull his phone, he had his phone out, and he started. And it was funny because he said, Dad, go this way. And we went on down. He says, okay, Dad. We came to one point, he says, all right, go right. My ways were saying keep straight. And I sat there and I got to a point. I'm used to telling him what to do. So I had to overcome that part. I had to humble myself. And I had to stop listening to something that had already had me crazy. This ways was, I didn't know where it was going to take me. <laughs> and they said, Dad, turn right. And Dad listened. <laughs> and I turned right. And he guided me. To the, air, to the terminal. And he, he doesn't know, but I, felt, I start feeling better on the inside because I was messed up, y'all. <laughs> I was messed up bad. And his voice, it wasn't, he was, he was a calm, steady voice. Amen. He said, Dad, keep straight. Dad, at the light, turn right. And when we turned that right, and I could see that terminal. I was like, thank you, son. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. Yes. We just got to learn how to trust that voice. Because when we go our own way, it's confusion, it's frustrating, it's irritating. You know what I mean? You just messed up. But the Holy Spirit speaks the truth and will lead us to where we need to go. Amen? Amen. So I was just, I said, thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Nathan. I was ready to buy this boy anything. I said, what you want, man? <laughs> I'm telling you, his, he, you know what's the, he got a five-star rating. What's the rating system? His, his stuff just jumped that day. And it, it would illustrate it so clearly. That's the Spirit. Spirit does not holler. Holy Spirit just speaks. You just got to listen. And you just got to trust. But we've got to put on this belt of truth. And if you look in the Old Testament, we have, you see how important it was for the children of Israel, to, to hear truth. There were times when any time something happened, they inquired of the Lord. You hear that statement? Or they sought the Lord. Why did they do Because they needed to hear truth about their situation. I know what I'm saying. Lord, I need you to tell me something so that I know. And so that's what you'll see. They always inquired. And so we always need God's truth for every situation. We always need God to tell us the reality of what we're dealing with. Amen? So you'll see that. You see it, that his truth will help you on the evil days, such as when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego received the command. I, and I love this. I was, this. I was just enjoying this because when King Nebuchadnezzar said, you know what, because of the schemes, Everybody else in Israel bowed down that we know, except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who took their stand. And, they said, and the king said, all right, I'm going I'm to I'm give you a chance. Because I don't think you heard the enemy. I don't think you heard the, If you are, when you hear this time, when the music sounds and all that happens, and you bow down, good. But if not, you're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And they said, you all know the... King, we don't need to answer you in this matter. You know, we're not going to bow down. You, uh, the God we serve. Because he had asked, who's the God who's going to save you from my hand? How many times did the enemy put that question? Who's the God that's going to help you out of this situation? 
Who's, gonna, who's the God that's going to deliver you? Who's going to heal you? Who's going to help you in this situation? But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood on the principles of who God is. God didn't say anything. to They just said, God has said, don't bow down, and that's where they were standing. But they knew that our God can deliver us. They said, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from, from your hand, O king. And he will deliver us from your hand. But even if he decides not to deliver us, he's still God. And we still not going to bow down. All because it was the truth about who God was. And so Nebuchadnezzar said, okay, I'm going to make a point. Turn that thing up seven times. Let, let, let's see what your God... He, he, he made his own point, didn't he? Turn it... Y'all know I'm telling seven more times out of As if the regular time wasn't good enough to burn somebody up. Seven times. But how many people here know and they can celebrate that God knows how to make a point on your point? Amen? It's God's point that matters, amen? How many people know that God is able to make a point that can't nobody deny? Amen. Said that the fire was so hot that it destroyed everybody who was throwing them in. Everybody who was throwing them in. But for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there was no hurt found. The scripture says, there was nothing, no burn on their body. Their hair, hair wasn't singed. Their clothes wasn't scorched. And there wasn't even the smell of smoke on them. Did, did y'all get that? I don't know if God says, fine, you have no authority over them at all. But the whole point, which bless me, is that God is so powerful that we can go through hell and nobody will ever tell we've been through anything because he can bring us through and can't nobody tell nothing has ever happened to us. That's how awesome he is. I'm sure somebody said, man, we threw them in the fire. No, y'all didn't. It's unbelievable to the human eye. But God's truth says all things are possible for him. Amen? Amen. Now, that's a point. And then Nebuchadnezzar said, well, I ain't never seen no God like this. If anybody ever say anything against their God, they're going to be cut up in pieces. And God makes a point. And it's God's truth that helps us. And that's really the point. Everything you're going through, apply, put it on, apply God's truth, who he is, what he has said, and stand on that. We need truth for walking by faith. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Bear with me a little. You know, when God made the promise to Abraham, he came to them. We all know Genesis 15, 1 through 6. And, 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 and God appeared to him, and Abraham said, you know, God, you haven't given me no heir. God says, you know, but Eleazar, my servant, and God says, no, he's not going to be your He's not going to be your heir, but someone from your own body will be your heir. And the scripture says that God took him, brought him out of the tent for a purpose, and then said, look up, because the tent was blocking his, he, he couldn't grasp it. He, he, God had to take him out of what was blinding him to see what God really wanted to do with him. And what I'm saying is, sometimes God has to get us away from wh where our mind, to really see what God wants to do in your life. And he took him out and said, look up, because this is going to, Abraham, this is going to help you understand really what my plan is for you and your descendants. He couldn't grasp it without seeing that illustration because he hadn't had anything. And when God showed him and said, this is what's going to happen, this is what your descendants is going to be like, the scripture that we all apply, it says, Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him 
as righteousness. And you know all that says? is that Abraham believed God was telling him the truth. That's what we're talking about applying. That every day in every situation, remind yourself of who God is and say to yourself, God is telling me the truth. God has told me the truth. I don't know what you might be dealing with, but you arm yourself with the fact that God has told you his truth, his word is truth, and that is what's going to help you with whatever you're dealing with. Because if you don't listen and think about his truth, the enemy is going to keep putting information in your head to mess you up. He's not going to stop if you, if you say, Mr. Devil, please don't put that in my head. He does that willingly. So how do we counter that? We apply God's truth. We remind ourselves constantly of who God is, what he has said, what he will do. Because that's going to help us face whatever we're dealing with. And that's what the Apostle Paul was saying, you got to put your belt on. Because they, they, there's, a, there's, some, there's somebody scheming and thinking about what can I do with him next? You might must say, well, what does God have for me? Do I, is there a promise that I can hold on to? Jesus told them, the disciples before he left, for all of us, all authority has been given to him in heaven and in earth. He told them to go and make disciples out of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything that he had commanded them. What is he saying? Teaching them to observe, keeping the truth of God. And then he says, and lo, I am with you. This is important. When he says, make sure you tell now. Make sure you tell those living in 2023 that, lo, I am with you, even until the end of the age. I am here with you to be God for you, just like I did all these things for these people. I am here to be God for you. He even said in John 16, 33, that in me you might have peace. In this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. And these are truths that we got to hold on to and remind ourselves of. Amen? Amen? Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Which means what? He doesn't want us having bondage. He doesn't want us to just give in to what the enemy is trying to tell us to do. He wants us to believe. You know, I was, when I had talked about Abraham, and it was 75 when he came out, and we know that at 99 he had his child. Every day, or well, every year when something didn't happen, he had to remind himself, God told me the truth. In fact, Romans has said that he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. And I'm sure he had to arm himself Many days with that, when the enemy would come in and say, it ain't happened yet. You sure you heard right from God? You sure God's going to give you a son? He was fully persuaded. He did not yield to that scheme to don't trust God. Something is trying to get you not to trust God in some way. But God is saying, trust me. Trust me. 
everything that this word says is true. We've just got to trust God. He's trying to help us, amen? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is our truth. He's our Lord. He's our God. He's our King. As long as we place our faith in him and know that he's going to take care of us as he said, it's going to be all right. Amen. Amen. So I tell you, church, make sure that you make it a practice, a conscientious practice to put on your belt of truth every day so that you can take your stand against the devil's games. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another opportunity that you've given us, Lord, to hear your word, to be reminded of your truth. Your word is truth. Your word is spirit, and your word is life. Pray now, Lord, that you will allow this word to fall on good soil, that you may water, nurture it, and, and just bring forth fruit in every life, the increase of what you want. I pray, Lord, that nothing be snatched, that, Lord, we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need you, Lord. We need your truth. We need your help. Thank you, Lord, for giving us an armor that we can put on so that we can take our stand and that we can enjoy the victory that you've given to all of us. So I ask that you bless now these, your people, in every way. And Lord, if there be one, whether here or on social media, that recognizes that their life, they've been following lies, that they have not believed on the one Father whom you have sent. Father, I ask that you would stir their hearts, and if they are listening, that they would confess Jesus as Lord, confess the need to have a relationship with you, Father, through Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. They, too, could receive salvation through him. It's so serious, Lord. Your word tells us that you're not willing that any should perish, but that all come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is in Jesus Christ. He's the truth. So will you stir the hearts and minds and that if any hearts are being tugged, they too, they too will respond and receive Jesus Christ as Lord. So we just want to give you all the glory, honor, and praise and say thank you, our Father. And I ask your blessing now on all things in the name of Jesus. And Father, if there be any, Lord, as we take offertory, we ask that you would bless the offertory, Lord, that it would be used for kingdom use, that the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ might be proclaimed. Bless those, Lord, who have and even those who would like to but may be short. May you bless these, your people, and bless the offering, and may you be glorified through all of us. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and we ask these things together. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, and we say amen. I know that I can stand. I know that I can stand. 
what comes my way. No matter what may come my way. Jesus, my, my life. life is in your hands. Let's sing it together. Listen. Don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. And don't you be afraid. Joy cometh in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. Troubles, they don't last always. Ah, for there's a friend named Jesus. Oh, there's a friend named Jesus. Who will wipe every tear. Who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken. And if your heart is broken. Just lift those hands and say. Just lift your hands and say. Come on, sing it with me. Oh, oh I, I know, know I can make it. that I can make it. Bless your name, Jesus, I know. I no matter what comes my no way, no matter what may come my way, my life, my life is in your hands. Yes, Hallelujah! Thank you, Pastor Dave. Oh, let's give him a hand clap of praise. God is blessing us with wonderful word. Amen. Something that we need to to be able, you know. He can't, the enemy can't take anything from you. Everything that he gets, you give it to him, amen? And um, thank you, Pastor Dave, for that message. We need to stand on the word of truth. And I invite you to rise. Let's sing a couple of songs of praise before we dismiss today in regards to what we heard today. We have a helper that walks with us, lives inside of us, amen? The Spirit of the Lord, hallelujah, come on. The Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is mighty in this place. Let our anthems ring and our praises sing. Hallelujah to His name. Spirit of
Hallelujah. You are the temple of the Most High God. Amen. Hallelujah. I got to say, you know, when, when, when Pastor Dave started talking about the belt and, and asked Pastor C to pull out the belt, I had, I, my mind went into the, the next part of your sermon. <laughs> when I saw the strap, we used to call it the strap. <laughs> I was already there, man. I said, oh, my goodness. Okay, no, no. We're talking about the belt of truth. Okay, not. <laughs> I had to get myself straight because cause I, I got it, too. And, 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 you know, we had an accounting system in our, in our home. You know, cert, you got certain numbers for certain offenses. Amen. And, and lying was a big one that went over days. i put it that way. <laughs> but, hey, that, that, I needed that. I, I do. But it, it took a little bit to raise my hand. I had to force it up a little bit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's stand on some truth right now. Come on, church. This, this word, amen, this is, this is where you stand no matter what's going on in your life. You, know? you, you want to give him praise, of course. You want to know who he is. The Holy Spirit is illuminating the word. And as you rehearse it, stand on it and gird yourself, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for who you are. And we stand that none of this, nothing in this world can take you from him. Amen. God will not lose what he saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. In Christ alone, who hope is found, he is my life, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground. Firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ, I stand, I stand, hallelujah. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in hell, blessed faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died. the death of Christ I live. Hallelujah. He paid all of that, all the wrath of God that I deserve. He poured out on his son to, to reconcile me to him. Amen. That's a debt I could not have paid. I definitely couldn't have paid it for you. You couldn't have paid it for me. But our Lord and Savior did that for us. He said, send me. I'll do this for you. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and at once he stands. Yeah. 
out. True. Come on. No guilt in life. No fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first time to final death. Jesus commands my destiny. Ah, uh, speak it. No power of Can you clap for him? Can you give him a praise of glory and honor? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your truth, your mercy, your grace. It's all wonderful. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> praise his name. Praise his name. Amen. In the power of Christ. In the power of Christ, we stand. Amen. I got me a little joke with Jackie in the back. She know what I'm trying to do, Pastor. <laughs> in the power of Christ, we stand. In the power of Christ, you stand. Amen. In the power of Christ, you stand. Father, we just thank you for your reminder, for your truth. Thank you for truth for our lives. Thank you for changing that. Lord Jesus, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can rejoice in your faithfulness. Lord, now please bless these, your people. Uh, Lord, as we move forward, Lord, for the remainder of this day, this week, I pray, Lord, your blessings on each of these, your people, your peace, your grace, your mercy, just your help in all things, that we may walk with you each and every day and enjoy fellowship with you and enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So we praise you, we thank you, we love you, we adore you, and we ask these things and that you take care of everything else. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now, saints, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed week, family.